Hey there, Joey from powerhouseaffiliate.com. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna to talk about how I run financial lead gen offers on Google Display Network. These are CPA affiliate offers I run on Google. I run them on other app traffic sources as well. But today this video is inspired by one of the comments I received from another video I did where one of the viewers had asked if I would expose one of my abandoned ads campaigns. And the reason why I abandoned it is going to be described in this video, but this campaign still works. It's something that you could try yourself. And I'm gonna talk about the steps involved to do that, okay? So we're gonna get into my computer now and I'm gonna show you precisely how this works, how the Google ads are working and how I set up the ads, the landing page and all that stuff. So let's do that right now. All right, so here we are. Step one, obviously we need to get CPA affiliate offers or financial lead generation types of offers. Now this works with any type of CPA affiliate offer. In fact, it works with any type of affiliate offers, no matter what you're running. And the style of campaign we're gonna be doing today is what is called a listicle. And I've done other videos about listicles before. And in fact, I've also done case studies for our members area. You can see here in our case studies section that I actually just recently did one on Microsoft search ads for a gadget listicle. This is an e-commerce style type of case study that I've done recently. So you can also check that out at powerhouseaffiliate.com. The link will be down in the description. So let's go step one. Step one, we obviously need offers. Here we are in Max Bounty. This is a CPA affiliate network. There are thousands of CPA affiliate networks out there that have financial lead generation offers. And if you want more ideas, simply come to our forum at Powerhouse Affiliate. Over on the right side, you'll see we add latest resources and reviews all the time. There are networks in there that have these types of offers. So what you're going to do is you're going to first search for your type of offer. So if you want to type finance or whatever it is, um, this is what you're doing. So you're looking for financial lead generation types of offers and you want about 10 to 15 offers that you can use for your listicle because what we're doing here is we're creating something that is content for users to read. We're not just trying to create some landing page that we're gonna try a one-off uh, you know, headline and a bunch of calls to action and hope that they're gonna turn into a lead for a company. We wanna try and create content in this strategy, okay? I'm gonna show you more examples of this as we carry forward. I need to put on my glasses because I can, can barely see the screen here. Okay, so assuming we have let's say 15 to 20 offers in different areas. We'll talk about loans, you could do uh, auto insurance, life insurance, uh, refinance, a whole bunch of stuff. You can see it's all right here. There's tons of offers. There's literally four pages of offers. So I'm not gonna ramble on about offers. Now what we do is we, typically what I will do is I'll start by spying. So here's a spy tool I use and it is called Adplexity, okay? This is another link in the description for a big discount. I can't remember how much the discount is, but the link is down in the description for Adplexity. And what you can do here is you can actually search what other affiliates are actually doing on display ads, mostly from native ads networks. But the thing is, is Google display ads are pretty much the same as running native ads where you're putting display ads on other publisher websites. So really when you come in here and spy with Adplexity Native, which is the, the tool I'm using here, I'm seeing what people are basically advertising. And so what I'm gonna first do is I'm going to run a filter here for what's been running for say at least 14 days. The, the longer it's been running, obviously the better the ads are because they're probably working for whoever is running it. What I also wanna do is I wanna scroll down to the country that I'm gonna be focusing on. So if you're on a CPA network, most of the offers are targeted to a specific country. So you're going to make sure that all of your 15 offers are from the specific country, the same country, I mean. So in this case, I'm using all offers that allow United States. So I'm gonna select United States here on this filter. And again, now you can see I'm getting more filtered results which are starting to fit more with what I'm doing here. I've also put the word finance in here. So finance will be on the landing page. I could probably put something like insurance or whatever it is and I'll probably get better results, but I could test that later. What I also could do is come down and specifically select max bounty, but I don't see it right here because there are none. But max bounty would be on this list if my filters were maybe a little less restrictive. 
So anyway, we're going to leave it at this. And now we're going to look at some of the ideas. What I'm looking for is a listicle type of offer. So you can see here, here's a listicle for a gadget. Uh, gadget list to go 44 of the coolest gifts for this 2021. That's a, a lot of work. 44 gadgets on this landing page. Coming down. Okay, after changing the filters a little bit, I have found what I'm looking for. So here are some examples here of these types of listicles that we're working on. So there are different ways you can do this. You could do senior savings. You could do 25 ways to save, whatever. Maybe homeowners can do these 16 things to their house before winter. There's a whole bunch of different ideas you can use for the content of your landing page. But the idea here is to create content that people will read and not feel like they're being advertised to. So this example is um, one of the bigger affiliates out there, you can see a lot of their ads and here's the style of page. So basically it is a listicle again, and you have many different numbered items in this list that are all CPA affiliate offers. So this is the type of landing page you would build. So first you get your offers, then you build a landing page. The tool I use to build landing page is optimized press right now. Um, you can also see the link down in the description for that. Um, or go to powerhouseaffiliate.com slash optimize press. And it's super easy to build these listicles. And in fact, we've created a template at powerhouseaffiliate.com. If you go there, you can sign up for free. But we have templates in there to build listicles like this. So you don't have to start from scratch. And you can see some of the listicles we've made both on HTML and as well, we've made some on optimize press. So that, that's the basic um, layout of how this campaign works. Now let's talk about, you have your landing page set up, you have your offers, we use tracking or I use tracking. This is an advanced strategy. Obviously you need to track your landing pages. What I use is CPV Lab Pro. Um, you can use other tools. There's volume, there's funnel flux, there's a whole bunch. Just search affiliate tracking. I'm not going to get into that right now because I've done other videos on that topic. So I'm not going to waste your time. So you need to understand how tracking works. Now, once you've got your tracking set up, now it's time to set up your ads. Let's go now to the traffic source, which is today going to be Google ads. Now in this campaign, this is an example of what I did. I, I set up the campaign on Google display ads. Okay. So I've also done other videos on Google display ads. So I'm not going to go into rampant detail of Google display ads, but basically what happened with this campaign is I had set up the campaign using um, volume at the time. And what happened was my ads got flagged for malicious software. Um, and so that is why this campaign has been abandoned. However, I am still running similar campaigns. That is why I switched to CPV Lab Pro for my tracking. Now, I'm sure there's other people watching this video who are using volume successfully on Google Ads. That's great for you. But I'm sure there's also people watching this video who have ran Google Ads in the past and got the malicious um, flag on their ads. And that's because of the way volume sets up their CNAME and server um, connecting your domain. Okay, so that's the advanced stuff we're not even going to get into. But if you've ever had a flag on your ads, that is why this, um, this got flagged. So that's why this was abandoned. So it doesn't mean that the campaign doesn't work. Now another advantage of using listicles on Google display ads is that you're, you're not really breaking the bridge page policy per se, because you are actually giving content to the reader. You're creating an audience around your landing page and maybe they'll come back to your website some other day because they liked your content they saw in your Google ad or you could retarget them to another page on your website so they have trust around your content. They don't think that you're a salesman trying to just get them to buy something or become a lead for another company. That is why this works well with Google. So setting up Google display ads is, is, is is somewhat simple. Let me show you kind of the step by step. I'm going to try and do it really quick because I know I don't want to waste your time. And then we're going to go into the stats and I'm going to show you where the ads showed and where the conversions actually happened and how much the conversions cost. As you can see here, actually the conversions cost around uh, $33 Canadian per conversion. Now some of the offers I'm running pay anywhere from $50 US to uh, say $10 US. So really 
with a small minimal test I've done with, with $360 Canadian, I made back, uh, you could say, very close to the same amount because some of the offers were paying 50, some were paying 10 US, which is an additional 20% on the dollar because I'm running Canadian dollars here. So it's definitely some a great potential and we're gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how I would go ahead and optimize my display ads after I show you how I set them up and the actual ads I'm running. So the first thing we do is we, cl we click on create campaign and for this objective, you can really switch it up um, or go with no guidance at all and just kind of do it manually is usually what I do, create a campaign without the guidance. This basically just leaves it open for more options as you continue through their other options. Um, so I'm gonna go with display. These are fine because I'm going to eventually just connect it to my goals that I've already set up in this camp, in my account. So here I'm gonna go with a standard uh, display campaign. And here's where you put your websites, uh, your business website. I'm not going to type it out here because I don't want to give away my landing page. Um, but this is where you put that and then you go campaign name and you can call it whatever you want. So next you're going to choose your location. And obviously here we're going to select the United States. And we want to make sure we put presence people in our location. Okay, we need to select that. And we want to select United States. And some of the financial offers that you run have state restrictions. So what you're going to find what you're going to find is some states perform better. So what you'll do eventually is start to set up specific ad groups or specific campaigns only for that state, okay? And also some of these financial lead gen offers have time restrictions. Basically they only accept leads uh, maybe Monday to Friday till 6 p.m. or whatever it is. So you also have to make sure that you know these metrics or you know these rules and that you set those uh, rules in your campaign settings when you go into your time settings and all that stuff. All of that can be done in Google Ads. So make sure you keep that in mind. Um, here I'm, I've already got English and more settings. Here's where I set up my uh, campaign URL options for CPV Lab Pro so I can track all of the placements. I'm not gonna get into that, but if you have CPV Lab Pro or any other tracker, go into their documentation and see how you can set up Google Ads to properly track into your tracker because Google Ads does not allow redirects, so you need to use um, direct linking or parallel tracking and every tracker is different so I'm not going to get into that but here's where I would do that okay more settings you can set up your ads rotation so I can rotate best ads usually I set this to test um, first so I'm not going to optimize I want to make sure that all of my ads get enough traffic before I start making decisions and I don't want Google to make those decisions right now more settings um, Ad schedule, that's what I mean. If you want to set it here to say only 6 p.m. or whatever, that's where you do it here and you can switch the days. Um, devices, I'm gonna start on all devices, but maybe I find later that mobile is better than desktop, so I pause desktop. But that is kind of one of those things where you might wanna separate right away because your bidding is going to be much different on desktop than it is on mobile. <clears throat> so those are things you wanna consider as you build your campaigns, you don't have to just do one campaign. You might want to separate certain things apart, different states, different devices in different campaigns. Conversions, I'm going to use all conversions in my account. You can do that by going up to tools and settings and selecting goals or measurement, then goals and, or conversions here, I mean, and you set up your conversions here so that they're all going to be tracked in this campaign. Next is where we get into um, our budget. So here you can see I had set $50 <coughs> a day just when I was testing, but I mean, you can go up to as how much as you want. The more you test, obviously, or the more budget, the more data. Um, but of course, the more you lose if it's set up improperly. What do you want to focus on? Conversions here. Uh, I'm not going to start with a target cost per action right away because Google doesn't have enough data yet. Well, they do on my account, but I'm just making an example here. If you're just starting your campaign, you might want to start with maximize conversions um, or manually set your bids. 
So you can either manually set so you get traffic at a specific price or you can let Google try and maximize conversions. Both of these methods work. Um, one of them requires more budget, which is the automatically maximize conversions. You're going to want to jack your budget up here. If you have a big budget, I would go with that. If you have a small budget, manually set your bids and set them to a point where you can get some clicks for your 50 bucks. And hopefully the competition isn't too high on the placements you choose later. So you're going to enter your cost per click bid here if I want to manually set it. And let's say I go with $1 per click. That means <clears throat> that I can roughly get 50 clicks a day to my landing page. Now, if I have it set as enhanced cost per click, Google may or may not raise automatically my bid so that I get some traffic. So you might be paying a little more than a dollar per click. Um, that's just the way enhanced bidding works. Or you can select a bid strategy and you can literally turn off enhanced P EPC and now your bid is $1 and it will not go above a dollar for your clicks. Maybe like a penny, but like that's basically it. So let's go here next. Optimized targeting is set up for you. Optimized targeting helps you get more conversion by using information such as your landing page and assets. You can opt out or speed up by adding this, okay? I don't typically do this, so I'm just gonna, I don't, I, most of the time I don't really take advantage of their automation right away. Um, later on, I will. So here's where you do your ads. Your final URL will be your landing page. Um, you're going to add a bunch of images. So you want flashy images. I'm going to show you my ads here in a second. I'm not going to go through setting up an ad here because it takes too long and this video will just ramble on. So I'm going to cut that out. Once you've done and you've created your ad, you're going to submit it for review. So now let's go check out my ads so you can see. So here we are on the ads, uh, ad groups page. And you can see here that I got 912 clicks for an average cost per click of 40 cents Canadian. Okay, that's pretty decent for the amount of traffic I got from Google Display it is from the United States and it is financially um, targeted. So I am targeting people that are looking to save money. Okay, so here's my ads. So basically what I did is I set up one ad, but I had multiple images, multiple headlines and all of that stuff. So you can see here that it was a responsive display ad and that it was removed because of dis uh, malicious software and circumventing systems. And that is basically because of the tracker. Like I had said earlier, I used ad uh, volume for this campaign and it got flagged as malicious software, which automatically triggered a circumventing systems. And sometimes you don't get the circumventing systems, but basically it screwed that ad campaign completely. My account is still active, thankfully, but um, basically that's what you need to look out for. Also, you'll see here that the credit is checked. When I first submitted the ad, it was instantly flagged for credit. Um, they do have um, issues or they have rules around running ads for credit repair and all that stuff but I appealed it and I won and that's why the check mark is here so you may have to appeal your ad because of the wordings you use on your landing page especially if you're using financial offers they may get flagged for other financial rules that you're not actually breaking so you need to uh, make sure you're able to appeal that make sure you don't get this malicious software one though that sucks so as you can see I'm using a listicle style page and I'm using top 16 ways to save fast. That's my headline. So basically it's like a content, they're, they're reading content already related to financial news or financial advice or whatever it is. My ad shows up for top 16 ways to save fast. Now there's different ways you can use this headline. You can be like, these 16 programs are going to expire soon you know, you're going to save thousands if you don't do it now, or you're going to miss out on thousands in savings. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can do these headlines. I'm not going to get into headline uh, semantics here, but basically what you want is something that's going to trigger a high click-through rate, uh, an image that is amateur style. I actually went to our grocery store and took these pictures, okay? I took them myself, and I talked about this before. When you're running display ads or native ads, you want to take your own amateur photos because you have full copyright to them. If somebody rips them, I could potentially go to a native ads platform and say, hey, man, this guy's ripping my ads, um, and they'll stop him. Now, on Google, it's different. They're, they're too big. They'll probably just tell me to go fly a kite. But the point here is, you want amateur looking photos and you want some really aggressive headlines or, or headlines that are going to trigger a click. So that's the ad itself. And then it goes to my landing page, which is tracked. And then it goes and hopefully they pick at least one of the 16 offers on this landing page and convert into a um, 
a, uh, a lead, okay? So let's see how many leads and where they came from, okay? So what I can do here is I can go to placements and what I did when I set up my ads is I actually set up a couple of campaigns. I test keyword targeting, I test, I test placement targeting, I test audience targeting. There's different types of targeting you can do when you're setting up your Google Display ads, which we didn't get into when we set up this campaign for some reason, we didn't go through that. But basically I will set each one into a different campaign. So if I'm doing a keyword campaign, I do that and I have maybe five to 10 keywords. If I'm doing an audience, I do one audience and it's in its own campaign. And if I'm doing placement, I might have five to ten placements. So let's go and see where my ads showed and where they converted. So you can see here that you can actually see the exact websites that my ads were on and how I got conversions. So you can see Mortgage After Life got three conversions. And I can tell you right now, I know those conversions were for my $50 CPA affiliate offer. So it cost me $61 and I made 150, uh, it cost me 61 Canadian dollars and I made 150 US dollars. That's uh, a decent placement. So that's the type of placement I wanna focus on and find other ones similar to that. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna uh, look at their placement uh, tools up here. You can use some of their tools that they have and you can start planning your campaign further by using their uh, placement. So performance planner, you can use their keyword planner. It'll give you ideas, reach planners. These are tools that they give you so you can find more similar placements that you could potentially target later um, as you start to find these great placements. Now it is gonna cost you some money. You're going to lose money on placements like this where I got 100 clicks, spent 40 bucks, and I got nothing. Nine recipes, like why is my offer, why is my landing page on a recipes page, right? Um, maybe because they had something there that was targeting finance, who knows? Um, but these are the things maybe I wanna pause and you can do that simply by coming in here and excluding it. And you're gonna really have to start narrowing down and finding which types of placements are really giving you the, 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 the conversions and then you're gonna start building out from there. That is about it for right now. I have other, like I said, case studies that I've done. Come into powerhouseaffiliate.com. Check out the, uh, the listicle one. It's actually a great one that uh, we've done recently. Like I said, right here, the gadget listicle, same kind of style, but we're using search ads. And this can also be applied to Google ads. We've also done some uh, great Google ads training inside Powerhouse Affiliate. So come in there. If you like, again, this type of video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all of that stuff, share it with others. It helps build my channel, gives me motivation to do more great videos like this. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.